All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Founding of Israel Bible Studies program, and as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Now, with that, the title of this lesson is Save From What, How, and When. Save From What, How, and When, because we've been in church our whole lives, and um, there's never been really any clarity of you know what we've been saved from, what we're saved from say from the father we say from the devil what i mean what, what what do we say from right so we're going to go ahead and answer that question in this lesson today say from what how and when okay so with that we're going to jump right in because we have a lot of ground to care uh to cover and we have a lot of scriptures so what i'm going to encourage you to do is check in the comment section down below check the description box right check the description box it's going to have to have your um scriptures all in there so if i go a little fast no worry look in the description box and we're going to have the scriptures right there for you okay so we're going to keep going and, and we're going to keep pushing so we can get through all the scriptures that we need to to, to get to right because we have a lot of angles we have to hit this particular topic from so with that let's go ahead and jump into second peter uh chapter three second peter chapter three okay and we're going to begin at verse 15 and we're going to finish off the last three verses of chapter three right so we're going to start right here it's going to we're going to say uh, an account that the long suffering of our lord is salvation right even as our beloved brother paul according to the wisdom given him has written unto you as also in all his epistles or letters speaking in them of things of these things in which are some hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or twist as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction and i'm gonna point some things out uh, in this in a second and ye therefore beloved seeing ye know these things before beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness but grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, I want to point out a couple of things here. Now, first of all, he says, uh, Peter is saying, because I, I read Paul's letters and I understand that some of them is hard to be understood, right? Some of it, he writes things is a little, you know, it's a little crazy. But look at where he put the onus on. He puts it onus on the people who read Paul's letters and get it twisted, thinking that he's going against Torah, thinking that he's going against the law, and he's not, right? So, so he's saying, you know, look at that, and all his epistles spe speaking of things uh, hard to be understood, which they are unlearned and unstable, rest, which means to twist, and they do also the other scriptures, and they do that with the other scriptures to what? To their own destruction right because Paul he did preach salvation right but he didn't preach salvation and disregarded the, the the Old Testament right but that's what a lot of people do okay so they said he said that they twisted to their own destruction right they twisted to their own destruction so he's saying for us or admonishing us to be steadfast right to be steadfast okay so we're gonna go ahead and keep going let's go on over to Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 okay Ephesians 2 and verse 8 and it says for by grace are we saved through faith and that not of ourselves it is the gift of God not of worst works lest any man should boast meaning um yeah ultimately we're gonna be saved but ultimately we don't really deserve to be saved because technically we broke the covenant technically right so we technically broke it so we technically need to pay for those sins so we cannot brag that oh i'm so righteous i'm so good i'm so holy i'm gonna get my salvation just because i'm all those things no we can't brag like that that's what it's saying lest any man should broke technically we're supposed to go to the lake of fire let's just be honest okay technically okay i've broken some you broken some and te technically you broke one you broke them all right so we broke it right we broke in the covenant I mean we went outside the covenant now most of that was before we knew what the covenant was i get it but what i'm just saying is technically we broke it so we're supposed to pay for it so the fact that you and i will get salvation it is a gift and it's according to his mercy that doesn't mean that we don't have responsibility we do have responsibility okay but i'm just 
making it clear what Paul is really saying, okay? He said, not by any works, he said, it, but he's just basically saying, not because you're so great, you're so good, and because you kept the, the, the covenant perfectly, okay? He's not saying that, uh, you know, that's, how, that's why you're going to get it, okay? So we're just going to have to keep that in mind. But in verse 10, he said, for we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. What are these good works? What are these good works that God, that the Father ordained way before that we should walk in? We should be walking in his commandments. We should be walking in his law. Those are the things we, <laughs> that's what we should be walking in, right? Okay, so that, that's really what he's talking about. So we are his workmanship. He created us, created in Christ Jesus under unto good works. What we're supposed to do, what we're supposed to do, which God has before ordained that we should walk into him. Because, you know, you go all the way back to Exodus and Deuteronomy and stuff. And he said, if a man live by, he should walk in them. Okay, we, we get it, right? So th again, this is something Paul wrote. We should walk in them. Trust me, people get... Paul's writing twisted all the time, just like Peter said. People do it all the time, and it's, it's, it's just not going to stop, is it? They're not going to stop twisting his words until the Messiah comes back, okay? It's just going to keep going. So we're going to go Romans chapter 10. Right after the book of Acts, we're going to go to Romans chapter 10, okay? And when we get to 10, I'm just going to read 13, okay? 13, well, 12, 13, right? But let me go ahead and read 13 first. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right? Whosoever. It really is whosoever. However, let me give a little clarity to that. Let's go to uh, 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Okay? So, let's go ahead and get that straight. Are there other people besides Israelite that will be in the kingdom that will be saved yes there are other sheep not of the fold right who are going to be witnesses okay to the wedding supper that when when when, when the messiah marries Israel all over again right bring the, uh, the people into their place and put people in their land put them where they're supposed to go right now Israel will be the ruling class along with the Messiah, okay? Israel will be the ruling class. Abraham will be back, uh, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, all them, David, all these people will be back, right? So there will be a hierarchy. Just look at some of the parables and look at some of the things that he is. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords because there are going to be other kings and there's going to be other lords, right? So Israel will be on top. See, right now Israel is the tail. The day is coming where Israel will be the head, but... For you to be in charge, that means you have some people subject to you, right? There goes some people who are not in charge. You look at the parable. He said, okay, um, go and you're going to be uh, over 10 cities. Go, you'll be over five cities, okay? Things like that, right? So there's going to be a hierarchy there, okay? And it just really depends, okay? It, 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 it depends. So, yeah, there will be other people, but Israel will be on top. They will be made the head. That's according to the promise, right? But look at the le uh, the lesson I did a few months back, um, trading places, okay? Look at look at the lesson, trading places, okay? So we're going to go to Luke 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And we're going to go 46, 6 and 46. And he has a, a simple, simple question. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Because he's in charge. Is not the Messiah in charge? Okay, right? So a lot of people say that they're his. This is part of you being saved, right? This is part of because we need that leadership. OK, we need a Messiah. I know there's some over there that you don't need. You don't need that. You got people who, you know, they don't believe in Messiah and all that. Or they do believe in Messiah, but they don't believe that it is. Let me go through all the names so people don't get all upset. They don't believe that it is Christ Jesus. They don't believe that it's Yahweh Shai. They don't believe that it's Yehoshua or Yeshua or Yahshua. Right. They don't. Or Yahushua. They don't believe any of that. OK, any the no New Testament Messiah. Put it like that. OK, no New Testament Messiah. 
Um, but this is a messianic ministry. We do believe in the Messiah, so you need a Messiah. Okay, we need a Messiah. There, 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 there is a point to it. Okay, and like I tell a lot of people, because I always get people in the messages and things like that, and they're like, um, you know, they, they want to go back and forth and back and forth, and I tell them all the time, the reason I believe in a Messiah is because of the Old Testament. Okay, it's because of the Old Testament that I believe in a Messiah. Okay, for some reason, they think that I just look at the New Testament. And any one of you guys who've been looking at for a long time, you guys already know, I don't just teach one side, of, one half of the Bible. You guys know that, okay? Anyone who's watched me, you know that, okay? We're back and forth, back and forth. We break down words. We, we do all that, okay? So I'm not just stuck in the New Testament. You guys know that. I don't even have to justify that. But some of the people who come you know, who, who, who come to the channel and maybe watch one lesson, they see something, they hear me say, you know, Jesus or Yehoshua, or Yeshua or whatever, they, you know, they start flipping out and they start going, oh, well, you know, this JC this and JC that and all that other stuff. Look, this is a messianic ministry. We, as a messianic, there's a reason we need a Messiah and it is because of the prophecies, it's because of the Old Testament that we believe in the Messiah. So he says here, why and why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that which I say? So how is he your Lord? How is he your master? How if you won't do anything that he says? Okay, you know, you can go John 14, 15. And, and you say, if you love me, keep my commandment. Okay, so we know this, right? So let's go ahead and get that established and get that out the way early. Okay, so let's go ahead and go Matthew 8. Matthew chapter 8. All right. Matthew chapter 8, and I want to hit 23. Okay. 23 to 27. Okay. So watch this. 23 it says, And he was, and when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. <clears throat> And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? And then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? that even the winds and the sea obey him, okay? So, the, even, the nature obeys him, okay? The evil spirits, when he said, you know, come out of this person and banish him, they obey him, okay? So, the, the, the nature and the wind and the seas and stuff like that, okay? They don't say, oh, um, this is my Lord, okay? They don't say, oh, this is my Lord, and they obey him, okay? The demons... They, you know, they don't say, well, this is my Lord, but they, but they obey him. Okay. He has power over them. Right. So, so if you have these other ones and then you and I, we say, okay, this is our Lord, but we don't listen. We don't, we don't obey. All right. I mean, is he really your Lord? Is he? Because the evidence is obedience. That's the only evidence you have if he's your Lord. That is your evidence. I obey him. That's how. Okay. It's like James says, you know, I will show you my faith by my works. You're going to be able to see what I do and you'll know. You you just see what I do and you'll know. That's that's just plain and simple, brothers and sisters. Okay. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it pushing. Okay. So let's go to Jude. Second to the last book of the Bible, Jude. And I'm just going to do verse five okay and it says and i will therefore put you in remembrance though you once knew this how that the lord having saved the people out of the land of egypt afterwards destroyed them that believe not okay he had to do that okay and he did it a lot of different ways brothers he, he did a lot of different ways you know Korah and his company the earth swallowed them up Okay, he had snakes and vipers come and, and kill kill some of them. Um, you know, this is this after you know they got out. Okay, um, out of Egypt and, and so on and so forth. Okay, I can go on and on. You guys know that he had to do it. 
He had to do it. He, he wandered around in the desert for 40 years waiting for the old generation with that old mindset to die off. So the new generation, okay, new generation can go in with a different mindset because they probably still had that slavery mentality, right? The ones that come out of Egypt, they still had that slavery mentality, okay? So I don't want you to be a slave to the old doctrine that you had, the, the old lies, right? The old lies that you've been told and regurgitated over and over and over. I don't want you to be a slave to that. I want you to, now, now that you know better, okay? Now that you know better, okay, cool. Let me just go ahead and let down that old stuff that doesn't, doesn't even make sense anymore. Let me just put that down. That's what I want you to do, okay? I want you to study to show yourself approved, okay? So we're going to go ahead and keep, keep going. So we're going to go to the book of James, chapter 5. James is towards the end there. Book of James, chapter 5. We're going to go to start. We're just going to read 19 and 20, okay? And 19 20, it says, <laughs> Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. See, you're going to help yourself, right? Now, again, it's talking about salvation, being saved, saved from who, saved from what? Okay, you're going to save yourself from death, okay? I'm talking about the, like that lake of fire death, okay? You're going to save yourself from death. And that penalty, in, in that penalty, which is imputed from sin, from all the screwing up that we've done, okay? And say, so if you do it and you tell someone the error of their ways, you can save yourself and cover a multitude of sins. You can cover a multitude of your own sins because you're trying to save someone else. You're trying to be selfless, right? Now, let me go ahead and explore that just for a second. If they have an ear to hear. Now, the reason I say that is because you have some very passionate brothers and sisters out there who try to talk to people who are not listening. All you can do is just give them the word. OK, you cannot convince nowhere. Nowhere in the Bible. It says your job is to convince someone. Just convince them. Don't want to listen to them. You convince them. You go out you go knocking on doors. You go. Hey, you get up in the morning and breakfast, knock on that door. You know, get the, da, 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 da. hello. Hey, we got to talk about the most high. OK, boom, boom. next day. Boom. Hit him again. Da, 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 da. Oh, hey, we got to talk about the most. High. We got to talk about the Bible. Let's, let's, let's talk about the Bible. OK, every day, every week. No, you can't. You can't chase people down like that. Only those who. Who have an ear to hear. Doesn't the Bible say, you know, don't cast your pearls before swans, right? So if someone is absolutely just rejecting what you're saying, then they're not ultimately rejecting you. They are rejecting the Bible. They are rejecting the Messiah. They're rejecting the scriptures. That's what they're doing. Let's just keep that in mind. Okay, so it's not your job to convince. You can tell. You can tell them. You can share if they're willing to listen. Because if you're not listening, then you're wasting your breath, right? So this is a good thing. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. So you save him and shall hide a multitude of sins. Okay, both yours and theirs. You, you helping, you helping each other out. Okay? You helping each other out. You covering a multitude of sins, both theirs and yours, because you're doing a good thing. You converted him from an evil way. You're converting them from destruction. You're get, getting them off the path of destruction because if we keep sinning, okay, and disobeying, that's where we are. We're on the path of destruction. So you're saving them from that, right? Okay, so let's keep going. First Thessalonians, chapter one. We're gonna go First Thessalonians, chapter one, and verse eight through 10. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Okay, so this is an idea of what we're saved from. 
You're being saved from the wrath to come. You you you're being saved from that destruction. You're being saved. It's like for for example, when Job said, you know, hide me in the grave, right? Hide me in the grave until thy wrath pass, right? So you you uh, so either either you and I will pass before that destruction come, or we may be here and the destruction happens, and but we're being saved from it. We're being preserved, right? Okay, so. Either way, either way, you're being saved from that wrath and that destruction. Now, again, if you're a sinner, you're not in the covenant. You don't want to have nothing to do with God. You don't even care nothing about, you know, his law, statutes and commandments or whatever. You don't care nothing about having faith in the most high. None of that. You don't care about any of that. It don't matter if you die. You're still going to wake up to destruction. OK, so <laughs> there's no escape or you may be here when he shows up and you're going to be part of the destruction. So it does not matter. So that's 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 what we're saved from. OK, you're being saved from a particular judgment. Basically, the fate of the wicked. That's what you that's what you're being saved from. But we're going to explore. We're, we're going to keep exploring. Right. We're going to keep exploring. Keep going. We're going to keep pushing. OK, so that's first Thessalonians. Now, let's go to James one and we'll go back to James real quick. James one twenty one. OK, we're going to read twenty one and twenty two. Wherefore. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Be ye doers. You and I, you're learning. Time is running short. Okay. The day of salvation is nearer now than when you first learned, right? So we have to put into practice what we are learning. Don't make it all com too complicated. Just put it into practice. Do it. Put it into practice. Put your faith into practice. Put what you know now that, that, that you now know, put it into practice okay this is what we're this is what i'm saying this is what we have to do put it into practice all right so let's go ahead and move forward second timothy three back one book second timothy three Okay, we're going to do 14 through 17. But continue thou in the things which thou has learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou has learned them, knowing of whom thou has learned them. And that from a child thou has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And we already know what the good works are. OK. We already go look at the, the, the lesson according to thy works. Right. Look at the lesson. Go, go in the library and look at according to thy works if you want more on that. OK. So we already we know what they are. That's how we're. That's how we're prepared. That's what we're made for, right? That's what we're made for. Now, I know uh, Satan, society, and self threw us off track. I get it. I, I get it. That threw us off track. But now that you know, now that you know, let's get, let, let, let's get this thing in order. Let's get back in, in line. OK, look, 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 look what it says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scripture. What are the scriptures? Come on, class. What, what are the scriptures? Is it the New Testament or is it everything before Matthew? Is it the Tanakh? Right. Which, of course, contains the Torah, too. Right. So now. So, so all scripture is given. We know we, we know it's not the epistles. OK, we, we know it's not the gospels or the epistles. Right. So come on, class. 
Let's go ahead and keep this going. See, this is the kind of stuff that people get twisted. They get they get Paul all twisted up and think he's saying something else. No, 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 no. We we dealing with this whole thing. Okay, we're dealing with the whole thing. Okay? Set second Timothy. And now we're gonna go to Acts 2. Acts chapter 2. Okay, with that, we're going to read 37, Acts 2, 37 to 40. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? All right, it's a question for all of us, right? What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So he said, he said, he basically said, he said a lot of stuff. And you and I, we have to save ourselves from this untoward generation, right? We, we got to do something. We have to save ourselves from this untoward generation. Because you're passionate for the word, you're passionate for knowledge, you have a zeal of God, it doesn't mean that other people do too. So you have to save yourself from this backwards generation. You have to save yourself from a wicked generation. We have to save yourself from a generation that uh, while you're going closer to the Most High, while you're trying to get closer and closer, they're moving further and further away. While you're trying to let go of the world and, and, and what it has to offer, they're trying to cling to it even more. So that's how you, you have to save yourself from this untoward generation. I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, every time, every time these, these lessons come, I keep thinking of another lesson that I taught. Okay? A couple months back, I taught love not the world. Okay? So you can... You, you can you can go look at that one if you want to go deeper in that. You want to go a deeper dive into that. Okay? But that's what it means. You, you have to save yourself from this untoward generation. That's one of the ways you're going to be saved. You're going to be saved from that death. Saved from that lake of fire type death. Right? Okay? So let's keep it moving. Let's keep pressing forward so we can get all this down. So we can consume all of this. Go to Ezekiel. Join me in Ezekiel. When you get there, brothers and sisters, the book right before Daniel. Right before Daniel. And let's see here. Chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. I'm going to start at verse 21. Okay. And you guys know, you guys know what this, you know what this is about, right? You guys read this before, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, give you an idea of what we should be doing. Okay, so we're going to start at 21 and read it to 32. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live and he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. So that means it's possible for you and I to be right. We can commit righteousness. If we can commit wickedness, then we can commit righteousness. And if we are committing righteousness or actively practicing righteousness, then our sins can be forgiven and not even mentioned to us. Now, how? wait a minute, wait, 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 wait brother, hold up, class. How good does that sound? Okay, you know you messed up before, right? You know you sinned. But if you walk in righteousness, not only will he forgive you, then he won't even throw it back in your face. Now, how's that? How, now, what, what will man do? Man will throw it back in your face and keep reminding you of how you messed up over and over and over. And then the Messiah just say, look, look, if you walk in righteousness, if you do right, I'll forgive your sins and I won't even bring it up no more. How's that, class? How's that? Okay. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and continue. <clears throat> 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not 
that he should return from his ways and live. He said, I don't, I don't like having to kill you. You know, I, I prefer <laughs> you walk in righteousness, 24. But when a righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall be mentioned in his trespass that he has trespassed, and in his sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. Meaning, if you keep practicing, you're, you're basically like being caught red-handed, or you are currently doing that. If you're currently wicked, you are making a practice out of the wickedness. Like I, I like to use the easy ones, like, you know, stealing. You keep stealing, right? You say, okay, well, you know, I, I, I know I've been stealing all week. I stole every day, but I didn't steal Tuesday. Well, that ain't good enough. Okay, that's not good enough. You need to be on the path of not stealing. Okay, stop stealing, right? So that, that that's what that's talking about. So he said, like, if, if that's what you do, like until you die, because remember in the New Testament, talking about endure to the end, right? Endure to the end until you die or until the Messiah come back, right? Until you die, right? So if someone is actively committing a wickedness, right? Committing sin, and I, I just like to use like stealing, right? If someone is actively doing that, okay, now you're gonna die in that. You gotta pay for that. Okay, that little bit of righteousness because of two, three days you didn't steal, <laughs> that's not good enough. That's not gonna do it. But on the other hand, on the other hand, you used to steal, okay? You used to steal, right? You stole a long time ago, right? Maybe you stole a lot. But since then, you found the error of your ways. You repented, you prayed, and you cried out to the Most High. You asked for forgiveness, and you changed your behavior. And you said, I'm not stealing, I'm not stealing another thing another day in my life. Guess what? You're gonna be forgiven, and that fact that you stole before won't be thrown in your face. You with me, class? This is what we're talking about, right? That's fair, right? That's fair. Okay, so let's look at this. 24 again. But when a righteous turn it away from his righteousness and commit iniquity and do it according to all the abominations that he, uh, that the wicked man do it, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he has trespassed, and in his sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. They're basically saying that he's not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal, or not your ways unequal, right? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committed iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he has done shall he die. See what I'm saying? So he's going to die because of his iniquity, because he's dying in his iniquity. Meaning you're currently doing it. You're you're in the midst of your, your, your sin. You're in the midst of your, that's what you're doing. You're currently practicing that sin. You're currently doing it, right? Okay. And then we have 27. Again, when a wicked man turned it away from his wickedness that he has committed and do it that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive because he considereth and turn away from all his transgression that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet say the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. They say, oh, it's not fair. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal or not your ways unequal? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, said the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin, might not be your destruction, the reason why you're going to be destroyed, okay? Turn from your evil ways. 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make ye a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, said the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Look at how he put that. <laughs> Look at how I put it. Just, just turn yourself around. I don't want to have to destroy you. I don't force my hand. I even make a deal with you. You turn from your wicked way. I'll forgive you, and I won't even make mention of the sins that you committed in the past. How's that for a deal? It's like the New Testament says, and I, and I know I keep using. The uh, stealing example, I just like to use an easy one. Let him that steal, steal no more. How easy is that? 
Let him that steal steal no more. So let's keep this simple. Let's keep this simple. Okay? That's where that's how you're saved. You clean up your act. That's how you say. Right? At least get faced in the right direction. Psalm 119. I'm going to go to Psalm 119. I want to read 166. Psalm 119. 166. Which reads, Lord, I have hope for thy salvation and done thy commandments. Woo they go hand in hand. You and I, what, what, what are we? We hope for salvation and we need to do his commandments. They go hand in hand. You don't see the people in the Old Testament, they had a hope. They had faith too. They had faith too. But they knew what had to go with that faith of oh, those words. And that's how they're saved. See, over here, here, found the reason. We don't pick and choose, oh, okay, is it faith, is it works, it's both, okay? You don't make the PB and J sound without the PB. <laughs> or the J, you need both of them, right? All right, so sorry if, the, if you guys don't like PB and J, but you know, that's popped in my head there, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and keep pushing. Let's go to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. Okay, Romans chapter 8. Okay, so we're going to do Romans chapter 8 and 24. We're going to do 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? Okay, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Okay. Let me go ahead and break it down a little bit for you, okay? So, if the Messiah, okay, is standing right in front of you, okay? If he's standing right in front of you, literally, let's just say literally standing right in front of you, then your faith is not quite as strong that, oh, uh, I hope, you know, the Messiah, I hope I can shake his hand or I hope I can talk to him, but well, he's standing right there. He's standing right there, okay? So your hope level is not as high as if you're expecting him, okay? You're, he's not there, but you expect. You say, oh, I hope I see him one day. It's right there. Say, what, what, what use is that to hope for? It? It's right there. You see it, basically. He's saying you see it. It's right there, right? But he said it's real hope, okay? And it's not, and again, it's not a wishy-washy hope. It is an expectation. Okay, it is an expectation. Like for instance, we are being believers. We expect to meet the Messiah one day. We expect to commune. We expect to get in, 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 in the kingdom. We expect that, right? And it's not an arrogant or whatever. No, it's like we expect that we grab hold for this covenant and do what we can and he forgives us. We expect those type of things. That's okay, all right? So that, that's what he's saying. There's an expectation. That's what the hope is, right? And so, it says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? Okay, so if he sees it, why, why would he hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we, with patience, wait for it. Okay, again, we're waiting for all these things, right? We're waiting for all these things, and we, and we hope that we're spared from destruction, right? That's the expectation. If we grab hold of this covenant, if we obey we love it we have faith okay we do we do those type of things then we hope that ultimately we can grab hold of the prize right that is and, and of course salvation right so we're in romans 8 and we're moving on to first peter 1 first peter 1 13 Okay, and we're going to go ahead and read 13 through 16. Wherefore, gird up, gird up your loins, gird up the loins of your mind, 
be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Okay, you didn't know better before, right? So you're going to change that. But as he which has called you in holy is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Look up the word conversation in there. Look, check, check, check your uh, strongs. And in 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Okay. So he says, be ye holy for I am holy. Now you have an idea, right? You have an idea that what manner of person you ought to be. If you hope for salvation, if you hope to be saved, then what manner of person you ought to be. Okay? Be holy, be circumspect, be uh, wise, be obedient, as obedient children. So, what the scripture says for us to do, then we should make every effort to do that. Simple, right? Let's just keep, let's just keep it simple. Okay? I like to keep it, thus says the Lord. That's why I read a lot of scriptures. I like to just... What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? That's what matters, right? So Hebrews chapter three. Hebrews chapter three. We give you more. Gonna give you more scripture. Okay, I'm gonna give you enough. I give you more scripture than what you're gonna get in your old life, the old regular Sunday. I'm gonna give you more scripture than I got in Sunday church. Okay, I'm gonna give you way, way more. Because time is running short and we, we, got, we got to get our understanding up, right? We got to get our understanding up. We have to internalize this stuff, okay? You don't care, you don't care what I did on vacation and all. You don't need to know all that, okay? That, that, that's not going to save you, all right? You need to know what thus says the Lord because that is what's going to save you, okay? So Hebrews chapter 3. And from there, I want 13, I mean, 12 through 14. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one, uh, one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end steadfast until the end so if you've been following the ministry and you've actually learned something you've actually been edified you have to hold what you learn to the end until the end until you die or until he shows up one of the two it's not enough just to hear it and then just walk away like like nothing ever happened hear it meditate on it go back over the scriptures okay apply it to your life hear it and do it hear it and live it until the end and hold fast to the end don't get blown away by every wind of doctrine because that'll come in for some of you class i know is it has happened some people somebody comes along and they got something else and then something else and then something else like the, the scripture says of many books <laughs> you know there is no end there's a lot of stuff but we got we we got to get the basics down. You got to have a solid foundation. People out there building houses, faith houses. You out there building your house of faith and everything, and and you you didn't even finish the foundation. You haven't even finished, you know, your floor. Make sure everything is solid. Make sure everything is level. But we're getting carried away by every wind of the doctrine. What about this? What about that? And what about this? And what about that? But this other book, and what about this hitting this? And this other that? And what about this a bunch of confusion? Get your foundation strong. Get your foundation strong. Because ultimately the goal is salvation, right? If that's the goal, that's what this lesson is about, okay? Save from what, okay? How, when? Let's look at this, okay? So one, we have to endure to the end. You're saved in the end. You're not saved right now. You're saved in the end, okay? All right? So there's, obviously, obviously I have a lesson of once saved, always saved, okay? So this, this, this lesson, really, I'm just spitting out other lessons that I've had or whatever, and I'm just showing you that there's a little different, but if you want to go in a deep dive, I'm giving you the lesson to go look for on the channel. 
if you want to deep dive into something, right? Okay, so I, I gave you that. And we are in Hebrews, so we're going to go ahead to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. 2 Peter And we're going to do 20 and 22, 20 through 22. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But... It has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. That's going to happen, people. I've, I've already seen it. I've already seen it, okay? I've been teaching this for a decade. I've already seen it. A lot of people come into the truth, get a little bit of understanding. They come into the front door truth and leave out the back door deception. Okay? It just deceived themselves. I've seen people come into the truth, eyes light up, and leave not even believing in God. I've seen. It. Not not even don't, don't there is no God. There, you're God. There is no God. You're you are God. Okay? And, and come in and believe in the Messiah and I'll no, nope, nope, there's no Messiah. And so they're Latter end is going to be worse than before. Some of you, class, some of you, raise your hand if you've seen that already. Okay? It's going to happen. Let, let me go ahead and give you, let me go ahead and give you the memo. It's going to happen. Okay? You're going to be in this walk. That's why I keep talking about endure into the end, endure into the end, endure to the end. That's why you have those parables talking about, uh, you know, the, 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 the sower seed and on the different grounds and stuff like that. People are going to come in and people are going to leave out. People, you're going to be shocked. You'll be like, oh, whoa, what the... Wow, I thought whew, they had it going. They, 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 they were on it and they're gone. They left the faith. They're gone. You'd be shocked. I've been teaching. OK, I've been teaching this for like a decade or whatever. And um, you would if I walked away, and I don't believe in none of this no more. I forget the Bible. I'm out of here. It, it, it's over or whatever. You, you may be surprised, at least those who've been following for a while. You may be surprised. Be like, Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> What's going on? Pastor Robert, <laughs> he walked away from the what? What? And then you start getting sh shaken up a little bit as far as, you know, well, if he doesn't believe anymore, what's going on, right? So that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just giving you the heads up that people are going to walk away. But you, I'm encouraging you, you have to endure until the end. Everyone's not going to go with you. I know you want your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your cousin, your friend. I know you want them to go with you. Not all of them are going to go. I'm going to take one from, my, one from my household, two from a city, you know, you, it's just not, everyone is not going to go. Sometimes you just have to save yourself from this untoward generation, period. You have to. It's like parents, when you have your, you know, adult children and they move out of the house they move they go on they live their life it's on them what are you gonna do now would i like my entire family to be say absolutely of course i would would i like everybody i talk to or everybody coming to the sound of my voice to be saved and get into the camp? yes of course that's why i'm on camera talking about it. I, I really do i do but I know not everyone is going to endure until the end. I know that. And you got to realize that yourself. Let's continue. So we are in 2 Peter. Let's go to Luke 9. Luke 9. And go to 61 and 62. Okay. Luke chapter 9, 61, 62. And he said, and another also said, Lord, 
I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto them, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? That's why the scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It is good to preach unto other people, but you better make sure you got your ticket first. Okay, it's just like when you're in a plane and they say, hey, if you got to help someone put on their, you know, life vest or a boat or plane, whatever you put on their life vest and all this other stuff or the mask drop down, put yours on first. Put yours on first. Make sure you're okay first. Focus on your salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, so let's keep moving. Let's keep pushing forward. Okay, Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Okay? Have some level of contentment in your heart knowing that you are on the right side of the Most High's plan. Because he won't leave you, won't, if you, if you stick with this covenant, he will never leave you and never forsake you, despite how you may feel in the moment. He won't leave you, he won't forsake you. Stay with him, trust him. He won't, despite how you feel in the moment. In the moment, the emo your emotions may betray you. Your emotions might tell you that he's not around, he's not listening, he's not answering my prayers, he's not helping me out. Not that. Your emotions might say that. But which do you believe? You believe the Messiah, the Most High, the Holy Spirit, you believe your emotions. That's really, that's, that's really, really what you have to understand. You have to get that through your head. Okay, am I trusting my emotions right now? Or am I trusting what is written he's trying to save you he's trying to save you but he's going to do it the way he's going to do it that's really what it's going to come down to okay so don't forsake him and he won't leave you one thing is for sure we, we see in this bible is that he, he, he'll, he'll keep his word the question is will you he will keep his end of the bargain, will you? Okay, let's keep going. Second Chronicles. Chapter 24. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter 24, we're gonna start 17 to 21. Okay, and it says, now after the death of Jehoiada, came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served groves and idols and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord and they testified against them, but they would not give ear. And the spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, thus said, the, thus said God, why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he has also forsaken you. <laughs> you have to do it first. When you have an agreement with, when you have an agreement with, with, with Messiah and the Most High, if it's broken, I guarantee you it's gonna be broken by you first. Because he has no reason to break it if you keep your end of the deal. He didn't just, just change his mind willy-nilly. I, I, 
I know you've been good. I know you. I, I know you've been striving to try to, you know, get into the covenant. I, I know you've been, you know, praying to me. I know you've been, you know, giving your alms and helping your brother, loving thy neighbor. I know you call upon my name. I know you're obedient. I know you uh, observe my dietary law and my Sabbath. And you know, I, I know, I know that. I know you observe my feast days. I know you try to do the best that you can. I know, I know, I know. But, eh, I changed my mind. The Lord. He's not like man. The Messiah is not like man. The Messiah is not like man. He doesn't do that. Not like that. Fickle. He, no, no, uh, uh. A deal's a deal. With, with the Most High, a deal's a deal. So he, 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 he does not rock like that. So the first person who's gonna break it is probably gonna be you. So check you, don't, don't check him, check you. He's trying to save you, He's not. you're not trying to save him. He's trying to bring you up, make you a God. You're not trying to make him one, he already is. When I say you a God, I mean little g, you know, like it says in Psalms, okay, little g. But he, he's trying to get you to the next level. He don't need you to bring him to the next level. He's trying to get you there. Trying to get you into the kingdom. He's already, he, that's already, that's already good to go. It's going to be a new heaven, a new earth with or without you. With or without you. I'm just telling you like it is. Okay, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Okay, so I'm gonna finish because I wanted to finish at 21. He said, and they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. They killed, killed him because he simply told them what thus says the Lord. It's just like the Messiah, just like uh, Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh And I say that because so many people, it don't matter what lesson it is. They're gonna be crying about, you know, names I'm using and stuff like that. But, <clears throat> uh, just, be, just, just like he said, he said, you kill the prophets, okay? You, you, he, told, he told the Pharisees, y'all kill the prophets. Just because the Lord, and just because they say, what thus says the Lord, you get killed. But let me ask you something, class. Is Zechariah going to be all right in the end? Think about that. Think about that that let's continue first corinthians first corinthians this one's gonna be a little longer than usual but hey we i i need to get it all out right you need to get it all out first corinthians chapter nine First Corinthians chapter nine. I had a couple of people request, hey, could you do some lessons that are a little bit longer? You know, that an hour is just not enough. So this one's gonna be a little longer than an hour, okay? So, first Corinthians chapter nine and 24, we're gonna do 24 to 27. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one received the prize, he asked the question. So run that ye may obtain. I'm encouraging you to do the same thing, right? 25. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to attain a, a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Okay, everybody who run, they're trying to get something, but we're trying to get an incorruptible crown, something that never die, never go away, right? I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, not uncertainly, so fight. I, not as one that beat the air, not for nothing, just shadow boxing, okay? 27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means which I have preached to others, I myself found be a castaway, right? I'm gonna keep, I hey, I'm walking self circumspect, okay? First of all, he said, I'm not running this race for nothing. This is for certain, okay? First of all, my prize isn't something that's corruptible that's gonna go away, it's incorruptible. And I don't just do it just beating the air. I'm not just shadow boxing. I'm hitting something. Okay? And 
I'm going to be careful that I try to keep myself under control, keep myself under subjection, looking at my own conversation or manner of life to make sure that I'm not a castaway, make sure that I don't make it. So a lot of the people walking around acting like they are holier than thou, touch me not before I am holier than thou, some of them are going to be in big trouble because they keep putting forth the finger at other people way too much. Way too much. Even Paul, Paul, who we believe, we, we believe he's going to make it, right? He even said right in his letters, yeah, I man, I'm worried. I, I may not make it. I might be a castaway. I might not be saved. That's what the lesson is about, right? I might be a castaway. I might find myself going up to the doors of the kingdom if you forgive the metaphor, going up to the doors of the kingdom and they don't let me in. About the people walking around thinking they're just way too good, way too pious. You better have some, uh, have some um, humility about yourself. He said, I might not make it, so I got to keep my body into subjection. I got to take certain things into account just in case. Brothers and sisters, work out your own salvation, right? Let's, let's, let's keep all this in mind, okay? All right, 1 Corinthians, let's go to 15. Chapter 15, 1 and 2. Let's, let, let's do this, 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, unless you believe for nothing, you have to keep in memory. Keep in memory what I'm what, what I'm what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is what thus says the Lord, right? So keep in memory what I'm preaching to you, unless you believe all this for nothing. That's why I say also do it. It's nice that you're learning something and you're coming up, you're growing. Okay, I I love it. Okay, but let's put it into practice. Okay, let's let, let, let's put it into practice. Okay, let's keep that in mind. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead. Let's see here. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. love learning more and more and more of what thus says the Lord. I love it. Matthew 24. See the pace that we keep this pace going, right? 24 and I want to read 11 through 14. Okay? 24, 11 through 14. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound or grow and the love of many shall wax cold, meaning less and less love. But he shall he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come okay so we still got some preaching to do still got some teaching to do okay so do you you got some witnessing to do it doesn't mean that you got to go out and teach and all that but you can witness you can let your light shine by your behavior by what you do okay you don't have to you don't you don't have to be self-righteous or anything like that. I'm not talking about being pious and self-righteous, but for example, you go out to dinner with someone or whatever, okay? And they order something unclean, you don't order that. Okay? Now, I know some people be like, "Hey, don't go to that restaurant at all." I get it. I'm just I'm saying if you happen to be in this situation, right? You you, you don't eat the unclean. Okay? You don't do that. Okay? For example, you're at a party or something like that. Don't don't eat any of that unclean food. But you say, hey, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't mess with that. I don't, I don't eat that. I'm sorry. I don't eat, you know, oh, you want to play? No, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't eat that. Simple. Simple. Let your light shine. Because what, 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 what might they ask you when you say that, right? Why? Well, well why don't you eat that? Well, why do you like crab, shrimp, you know? Why do you... And there you go. And there's your opening. They asked. There's your open, right? So there you go. Okay, so let's just, just keep that in mind. Okay. Revelation. Okay, Revelation. Uh, let's see, chapter two. 
Okay, we're in Revelation, we're going to go chapter 2. And we're going to read verse 25 and 26. 25 and 26. We're in. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. What you have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations for those who endure until the end. You will be the influence, okay? You will be the influence. When you're able to, 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 to strength, stand strong, when you have the courage of your convictions, you have to do that until the end. You got it. That's enduring to the end. When you have the courage of your convictions, then you press forward and you will be saved. The convictions of what this says the Lord, okay? What, what he says for you to do. That's how you overcome the nations. Right now, the nations, the nations are influencing everybody, right? And yet, you are set apart. Yet, you're making moves to where you are set apart. This is what we're talking about until to you you overcome that what you already know. Again, I, I, I've given you the basics. I've given you the Sabbath, the dietary law, the feast days. I can give you all that, okay? I give you all. I give, gave you the name. All, I, I I've been teaching. Look, look at the channel, okay? So the, the things that you know, hold fast to it. Hold fast to it, okay? Hold fast to it and do it to the end, and then he's gonna give you salvation at the end okay matthew 19 just a couple of more and then we're done go to matthew 19 a few more and then we're done matthew 19 and we're going to read 16 through 19 and behold one came and said unto him good master what good, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, Which? And Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy mother and thy father. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay? Look, he, he, how am I saved? How do I get salvation? Did not the Messiah just answer the question? You got way too many people out there convoluting and overcomplicating the question and the answer. He just gave it to you. Now, obviously, we have to couple that with faith, but you just told them. Didn't we just read earlier where it just said, you know, all scripture is good for, you see, you see what I'm saying? Structures and righteousness and all that. And, and how do you get eternal life? So there's an agreement right there. Let's continue. Matthew chapter 7, same book. Let's go to chapter 7. Go to our last two places. Okay, Matthew 7, 15. And this is what you got to worry about. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothings, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Right? Let's just get that right out of the way. Now let's go to 21. Not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of, the, of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And I will, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do with them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not, for it was 
founded upon a rock. Remember what I said earlier about, you know, you're building your house of faith, right? And you don't even have the foundation right. You haven't even finished the foundation because if that's not right, then everything else is going to crumble. That's what I'm saying. That's how we get carried away of every wind of doctrine. People say something, they challenge you. You're not quite sure. You don't know how to defend your faith and all that. You hear all these opposing arguments and all, and you get thrown way off, way off. And, and you get lost. I don't, I, don't, I don't want that to happen to you, brothers and sisters. Let's get this foundation right. So that you stand strong. This is what we're talking about, so that you can stand strong, right? And then, okay, 26, he said, And everyone that hear these sayings of mine, and do them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. So he's just basically telling you exactly what's going to happen. Some some new people, they come in, and they go right back out because they heard a little too much. They watched this YouTube video. They heard this person on the street. They were wondering about this. They were running, wondering about that and all that. And they get out of the faith altogether. House built on sand. So the question is, are you going to be solid? Right? Are, are you going to stick? Are you... Mm, or are you going to be solid? I mean, even the Bible said don't eat off way too many plates. Okay. I, you know me, I'll, hey, search the scriptures, prove all things, right? That's how I sign out every video, right? So I'm not saying, oh, don't go learn. Don't go ahead and, 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 and edify your, yourself. I didn't say I'm the only teacher out there. No, I said there's a, a few good teachers. Okay. A few very good teachers. But you need to limit your circle. You need to limit your circle. Who are you going to let teach you? Now, you can stick to just one. That's fine. That's that's cool. As long as they give you what they said, the Lord, that's cool. And you can look at a few others, but you better limit your circle because there's going to be a lot of contradictions, a lot, and then you left confused. A lot of contradictions out there. Okay? So be very, very careful. Build your house on solid rock, your whole house of faith, everything you believe, this doctrine. Build it on rock, solid ground, and then you'll be okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our last spot. Did we do 27? Yeah. So our last one, Revelation 22. This is what we're looking for. Last scripture. And finish it off right here. 22. We're going to read 12 to 15. Okay. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward, and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his works shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Look at your reward. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Okay? So we understand it. So we're understanding that people, you don't want to be counted among the number of people on the outside, which are dogs. And he's talking about, he's not talking about literal four-legged dog, right? Who are dogs and sorcerers and, and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whoever like to make a lot of people who are very deceptive. Those people are not going to make it in the kingdom. They're not going to get in there. Okay. But look at those, who, who, what he said, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter into the gates of the city. Many people are going to come to him uh, in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have we not did all these things? And guess what? They're going to end up on the outside. He said, depart from me, ye workers of what? The ones who work what? Come on, class. And look at that. He said, but blessed are those who do his commandments that they can go in and out. Come on, class. All right, folks, so I hope somebody has been edified by this lesson. So with that, until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things. Shalom, Israel.